Now, first there was Black Panther, now there's Children of Blood and Bone, the first novel by Nigerian-American author Tommy Adeyemi, debuted at number one in the New York Times bestseller list and has been nicknamed the Africa Harry Potter. It's the first part in the Orisha trilogy, based on the Yoruba religion, and it's been so successful, Tommy was offered a movie deal before the book was even published. Dabula Kamola from BBC's Africa What's New met Tommy while she was on her UK book tour. I try not to think of her, but when I do, I think of rice. When Mama was around, the hut always smelled of jollof rice. I think about the way her dark skin glowed like the summer sun, the way her smile made Baba come alive, the way her white hair fuzzed and coiled, an untamed crown that breathed and thrived. Tommy Adeyemi has only just turned 25, and she's already published a best-selling novel, with two more sequels and a movie adaptation on the way. Children of Blood and Bone is set in the fictional land of Orisha in West Africa and is based on traditional Yoruba religion. In the novel, teenagers fight an evil king to bring back the magic of their ancestors. I couldn't wait to find out what inspired her to write the book. The first inspiration for Children of Blood and Bone came when I was in a gift shop in Salvador, Brazil. And Salvador, Brazil, I think, has the most Nigerians outside of Nigeria. So I guess I shouldn't have been surprised about that all the cool things I was discovering came from Nigeria. But when I was in this gift shop and I saw a picture of the Orisha for the first time, and that was mind blowing because, you know, I'd never seen that. I've never imagined that we could have African gods and goddesses. And so it blew open my imagination and the world of the book came to me. I mean, why do you think it's important that we should be, if we should be told stories about black goddesses? We don't have these stories yet. Like, we can now just think of Black Panther. If we were talking in 2017, we wouldn't even have that. Yes, it's steeped in ni like Nigerian culture. Yes, they're, when they use magic, they're speaking Yoruba. But that's, those are more of the details. It's more of the fact that you pick up this book and you see a magical, dark-skinned black girl on the cover. When you open the pages, you see blacks of all shades on the cover. You see us celebrated as the hero. You see us in epic battles. You see us get these big, twisty romances. We have this story for all of us to celebrate. Tommy didn't only want to celebrate her Yoruba culture and dark-skinned heroes in the novel. She also gave the lead roles to girls. I don't know any women who aren't strong, you know. It was never going to not be about strong females because that's who I have in my life. That's who inspires me and that's someone too that I want to empower. I want to empower young girls around the world and even older girls around the world to feel like Zaylee and Amari. But a good story is for everyone. And I think that's what's special about this book is like, regardless of age, regardless of background, regardless of race, regardless of gender, you know, you can connect with these people because they're human. Why did you decide to write a young adult fiction? I was always going to write young adult fiction because I still love and read young adult fiction. I think some of the best pieces of literature being created today are in young adult fiction. But I also think too is that young adults are the people who are going to save us. You know, the world is not doing so hot right now and we have a lot of adults who are repeatedly making it worse and worse and worse. And when I look at the people who are saving the world, I see, you know, like this is in the United States, but like 11-year-old Naomi Walder like speaking out against gun violence and specifically how it affects African-American women. Like I see young children every day literally saving the world. So to write something that can empower them to do that even more, like feels like the best thing I can do to help. That was Dabula Kamoli from BBC What's New speaking to Tommy Adeyemi. Now you can watch more of that interview, just go to youtube.com forward slash BBC What's